I'm Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President, and welcome to this edition of Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. The newly passed state budget allocates about $750 million toward the $15 billion gap in the MTA's five-year capital plan. So we only have about $14 billion to go. Increases in ridership are well documented, as is a de decrease in service quality, some place the blame squarely on the shoulders of city government and say that more funding will not just benefit the MTA, but the economy of the entire city. Our guests today are proponents of the Move New York proposal to rebalance the tolls on area bridges and tunnels to help fund mass transit. Their plan would raise $1.5 billion a year. Joining me today are Sam Schwartz, also known as Gridlock Sam. He invented the word gridlock a former city traffic commissioner and chief engineer in the Department of Transportation during the Koch administration. He's now a widely known transportation expert and a consultant to Move New York. And Alex Matheson, the campaign director for Move New York, a coalition that is seeking to build support for a master transportation plan for the New York metropolitan area. Sam and Alex, I welcome you to the show to explain Move New York, the proposal, and I'm delighted that you're here. Thank I'm you really, much. really Thank pleased. You, you, so, Sam, let's start with you. Why don't you talk a little bit about the proposal and all the amazing support from right to left that you've garnered? Well, I've only been at this for 45 years since the Clean Air Act of 1970, and I've learned something over the years. And there have been many attempts from the Lindsay attempt to the most recent Bloomberg attempt. And in all the attempts, the, the formula was pretty much the same. Uh, told the East River Bridges or told the Central Business District, give all the money to transit. And that was about it. And it w never went over well with the outer boroughs. And so what this plan does is it takes all the outer bridges that have nothing to do with transportation into the Central Business District, lowers all of those tolls. Because right now, a ma majority of the dollars that's spent at the Throgs Neck, the Verrazano, and other bridges goes towards a transit system to subsidize a transit system to the central business district. That just doesn't seem to be fair. And then what we do is, similar to the Bloomberg plan, we have uh, entry tolling, no toll booths by the way, everything is done electronically, at the four East River bridges, which as you know, Borough President, Mayor Gaynor removed in 1911, shortly after an assassination attempt on his life. <laughs> Police say no connection, but I want to open up a cold case file on that and also entering at 60th Street. And the tolls would be exactly what people are paying today at, at the Throgs Neck Bridge or the Verrazano Bridge. And so it seems to be fair. You lower the tolls in those areas, you reintroduce the tolls uh, where they, they were and we, we should uh, provide them because there are alternatives to getting into Manhattan. If you're going over the Manhattan Bridge or the Brooklyn Bridge, plenty of subway alternatives. As a result of this, um, fairer plan, uh, we do have the support of, of people in Staten Island, of course. Uh, there are lots of support there, and that tends to be more middle of the road to conservative. Uh, we do have uh, support from, from a number of people in Manhattan. We have editorial support, as you, you referred to, from uh, the right. Mm -hmm. um, the New York Post came out with editorial support. Uh, Fox came out with editorial support in the middle. Cranes has provided editorial support, the Daily News, Newsday, and the Times has said some good things about it, although we're still waiting for that big editorial. Well, that's fabulous. Alex, um, how do you see that the campaign is going? I must admit, I voted for congestion pricing when I was on the city council, and I got so many uh, Manhattanites in my district, because I had 60th Street in my district as council member, and goodness knows I have it now as the borough president. Um, so I was really happy to hear about your proposal because it at least spreads out the discussion. Before it was really Manhattanites particularly upset and outer borough people, other borough people really upset. So mm -hmm. tell me how the campaign is going. We think it's going very well. I and mean, We've always known, Sam and I teamed up in 2012. We had a terrific campaign. We had some funding. We had a lot of coalition support and interest. But we really didn't have that game-changing plan. Sam is the one who I think, with all of his years of experience, understood both the right policy and the right politics, which is to make sure that folks in non-Manhattan boroughs 
as well as drivers get a lot out of this plan, and that's really the essence of the plan, and that's why I think we're getting so much traction now. But we've always known, we've been working for four years on a very grassroots approach, and the idea is to conduct a listening tour and to gather information from constituents, elected officials, businesses, labor unions around the region to really perfect the plan. So we now finally have released the final version of the plan uh, about a month ago, and it's perfect timing because we knew that this discussion wasn't really going to gain any traction until the issue of how we're going to fill that $15 billion MTA capital planning gap uh, uh, was, was on the table. And so now the budget's done, and uh, the, the governor and the legislature now have to turn their attention to some of these other issues, and certainly MTA funding is critical uh, there. So th the good news is that, uh, that, that not only are we gaining a lot of support across the city, and across sectors, but we're really the only viable plan out there. And so, uh, other than doing nothing, or underfunding the system, or kicking the can down the road, which is our real threat, um, we think that we're the only viable and, and, and smart plan out there. Now, in terms of what it would fund, it would be um, 1.5 billion a year, and it would be over lots of years. So how would the funding be something that uh, riders would see? Because right now, uh, we're overcrowded, the trains are slow. I get complaints more than ever before about the quality of the service, and so I think your timing is also unfortunately correct in terms of that issue, because I, just like you, take the subway. I've never heard as many complaints, uh, except of course in the 1980s, 1970s, but in terms of the service, where we expected to have um, better service because the trains look better, but they're not moving better. So I just was wondering in terms of what the public might see with your plan. Well, a, a number of things. First of all, um, we don't take all the money and give it to transit. We take about $375 million, roughly a quarter, and give it to roads and bridges. And that, you'll begin to see that in every community. Uh, but how do you provide, and the risk goes to, to public transportation, and how do you provide some quick fixes so that people begin seeing the benefits? Because while we're, we are all complaining, and I, I was late here today because the A and C weren't running, um, there's also a success part of what the MTA has done yes. in, in the past year, and another 100 million riders. If, I, if it were mm -hmm. my business, I would mm -hmm. be thrilled, and, but we're bursting at the seams. So we need more capacity in addition to some service improvements. Uh, we're looking at more express buses and less expensive express buses. We're supporting the mayor's ferry initiative mm -hmm. to take people in. We're also looking at city ticket, which could take people off some of the subways and put them on the railroads. What that does is it lowers the railroad price within the five boroughs. So someone from the Bronx or someone from Queens could take the Metro North along the railroad. Deal. That's a very and it is big, a big deal. deal. I hear about it a lot from my colleagues. And, and then o over some time, we support the uh, bus rapid transit or the select bus service. And we will be looking at other kinds of service improvements. And this is what allows us to have that, that uh, money and increased capacity. Communication-based train control, CBTC, is underfunded right now. And what that means uh, is you can run, instead of running 17, 18, 20 trains an hour in a particular direction, you can get closer to 30 trains an hour. So even without building a new subway tunnel, mm -hmm. Uh, you can increase capacity. I know in Manhattan also just bus service. You know, the 104 doesn't have enough capacity, apparently, to go across 42nd and then up 8th Avenue, complaints all day long. And then the M1020 and the M10 don't connect, aren't, you know, all these little issues to be improved, people would see that um, this funding was going somewhere that made sense for them. Exactly. So Alex, what, what do you um, hear when you participate and run this campaign? What do you think is most on people's minds in terms of what they want from their subway system? Get there on time. Yeah, <clears throat> I, think, I think that Sam really outlined it well, which is that we think it's incumbent upon us and ultimately the legislature who will hopefully pass this, uh, this plan uh, to make sure that those who are living in underserved uh, parts of the city where they don't have uh, ready access to uh, mass transit are starting to get to see some of that service. So Sam mentioned express buses. And also the issue of lowering the cost of express buses. Right now, as of March 22nd, those have just gone up to 650 per ride. So the gap is quite large between a regular subway fare or bus fare and express buses. So we would knock that down to 550. And affordability equates to accessibility, right? If you can't afford to take a 
express bus or a subway that's right close to you, then it's not really accessible. Um, so likewise with city ticket, that, that idea is to, uh, to extend that same discount on the weekends that you get on Metro North and Long Island Railroad within the five boroughs to seven days a week. So suddenly people have a real option. So the crowding and the delays and the unreliability of the subways is what I'm hearing over and over again is of, of concern. And the CBTC that Sam mentioned is critical to that, and it is underfunded. Why don't you say what, I know what it is, but why don't you explain uh, the it, acronym? It, it's basically the uh, uh, computer-based train control. It essentially means that we would modernize the signaling system that the MTA uses to essentially uh, communicate with the trains and, and allow them to move safely, first and foremost, but also by having a computer-based system, you actually can allow trains to move closer together so there's less headway between each train. What that means if you're a customer on the platform is those trains are going to come more frequently and they're not going to be as crowded. I'm hearing people complain about literally having to, to let one or two or three, sometimes oh, four trains go by Manhattan. before they can get on, and that's just unacceptable. We can't do that in a city like New York City, which depends so heavily on its transportation system to move people around uh, and to stimulate the economy. So uh, that's, that's the main concern. And again, the MTA, not the most popular uh, mm -hmm. agency uh, in, in, in the state, but you know, to their credit, they've done a lot in the last five years to trim their budget. They've cut their annual budget by, I think, about a billion dollars a year. So they have made a lot of strides in, in reducing the cost of, of delivering that service. And they, they need the money, you know, like them or not, they need the money to do this. Uh, that, that's no joke. And if we don't do something like the Move New York plan, the alternatives are much, much more grim. And I think that's really important for people to understand. It's easy to say no to something. But when you think about the alternatives, increasing gas taxes by probably 50 cents to a dollar based on the current formulas uh, across the region, that's not going to happen politically. Reintroducing the commuter tax, nice idea, not going to happen politically. Doubling the payroll mobility tax, wildly unpopular in the suburbs, that's not going to happen. Increasing the sales tax here in New York City and across the MTA region by th about three quarters of a percentage point, that's highly regressive, very hard on the working poor. That's not going to happen politically, especially under this mayor, and rightly so. So it really leaves only a few options. One is just underfunding the system, and we will see more crowding, more delays, uh, more track fires, uh, more derailments, et cetera, like we saw. Uh, back in the 70s and 80s, or we can just kick the can down the road, try and cobble together some funds, and uh, and hope that in, in, in a year or two we can come back to the debate and figure out some new way to do it. We have an opportunity now to do this. We've got a lot of momentum. We've got widespread support, and it really it's one of those jumping in the pool situations. Uh, if I think that there's a lot of support out there, but people were nervous because of the debate six years ago, and I think if everybody knew that each other were on board, they'd be ready to jump in the pool together. We're confident that if we can get legislation introduced and trigger a debate, we're confident we'll win that debate. Once the public understands the details of this, they'll support it. We actually did a poll uh, uh, by Global Strategy Group, very comprehensive, sophisticated poll last November, right after the election. This plan was supported by the region's voters two to one, 62 percent to 31 percent against. And even after they heard critical arguments against it, their support was still strong at 55 percent. Once people hear the details of this and understand the alternatives, they'll support this plan. I'm certainly supportive, but I'm only one person. Um, so the issue, of course, is places like Canal Street, which now is a parking lot. Um, how would the plan improve, I would say, from obviously we want the plan for the MTA and for the rider, but now we have the driver, the truck, the uh, person who's trying to get their business to be uh, efficient. Uh, how would the plan impact positively, I think, both workers, more jobs perhaps, and efficiency? Uh, we have what my father would call a cockamamie pricing scheme. Our pricing scheme actually incurs a trucker, let's say from Brooklyn, who's heading to Newark Airport, uh, to not take highways and not go out through the Verrazano Bridge, which is built for trucks, or the Staten Island Expressway, built for trucks, or the Gothels Bridge, which is being rebuilt as we speak, and then go to Newark Airport. And, and that would cost the trucker, if it's a five-axle truck, $86 today. If that same trucker decides to rumble along Flatbush Avenue, bounce across which is what they do. the 106-year-old now Manhattan Bridge, which is twisting and cracking as we speak, 
and then bounce along Canal Street with between Little Italy and Chinatown, mm -hmm. go out the Holland Tunnel, or the bigger trucks go out the Lincoln Tunnel, mm -hmm. it's free. Right. So our pricing policy says the bigger you are, the more we want you to drive on Canal Street. And, and sadly, every year we read about the same type of crash. It's a trucker who doesn't see a small pedestrian or even a big pedestrian because they, they can't see each other. And uh, as, a, as a result, we have fatalities along Canal Street. Canal Street has some of the worst uh, statistics of, of any area. And we see the same thing in East Midtown as well by the Queensboro Bridge and certainly along Delancey Street and Kenmare Street. So all these areas are suffering because we have a pricing policy that makes no sense, that is simply based on some historic facts. Gainer removed some tolls. Moses introduced new tolls. Uh, Nelson Rockefeller then mm -hmm. said, let's take the money from the tolls on the Moses bridges and give it to transit. So it, it, it wasn't a rational way. So that's why we say wipe the slate clean and let's have a bunch of smart people say, what's the best way to do it? And I don't think smart people would conclude that let's tax and toll the people going from Long Island to the mainland uh, and to give money to people to subsidize a transit system coming into the Central Business District. So the system we have is crazy now, and it encourages driving and big trucks mm -hmm. to drive right through the heart of Manhattan. Well, that's certainly an example of the 86, street, 86 uh, dollars. That's a wonderful analogy, yes. which is true, it's not an analogy. Yeah. So Alex, I think in terms of selling this wonderful plan, certainly talking about the ways in which we can be healthier, because the trucks are also not necessarily healthy, and traffic congestion in Manhattan, certainly for my borough, this is a good way to sell this project. Because if we have less traffic and we have pedestrian safety, and we have a more sensible pricing policy, and you can move as uh, both pedestrians and cars and trucks that need to be there, that's a big selling point. I agree with you entirely, and I want, I'd like to actually take the opportunity to address the concerns that you've heard in the past from your constituents, especially regarding the 60th Street yes, they screen are line. definitely calling me. Yes, exactly, and, uh, and, I, and I understand that. Listen, no one, I, I live in Brooklyn now, Sam's an old Brooklyn uh, resident. He's moving and to Manhattan. No, I'm he's, already yeah, in Manhattan. He's already yeah. well in Manhattan. Yeah. He, um, just so you know. I have my business too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and uh, so, but I live in, in Brooklyn, and I'm going to be paying that, that new toll as well if this plan uh, passes. And, and I like to say I'll be grumbling and cursing at myself for uh, having been involved in this, <laughs> this effort. But the truth is no one likes to pay a new toll, and that's like, 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 likely true with some of your constituents as well uh, with regard to 60th Street. But let me explain why the 60th Street piece is so important. First, um, there's an enormous amount of traffic that comes from the north as opposed from Long Island, from the east, uh, into the central business district. So if you're serious about reducing traffic and all the ills the traffic brings, you've got to address the traffic coming from the north. And truthfully, for most of those drivers, they can come all the way from Connecticut, from the Hudson Valley, from the Bronx, for free into the central business district if they come from the north over most routes. Absolutely. Um, so if you want to deal with traffic, you, you got to uh, address those, those vehicles as well. Secondly, um, it's not fair, therefore, to only toll those drivers who are coming from the east without also tolling folks who are also contributing to, to congestion and who currently, unlike the drivers that Sam's talking about in the outer parts of the city, are also not paying a toll. So out of fairness and equity, you got to kind of uh, cover both sides. And then third, of course, you generate a lot more revenue. Um, so if you're that person who lives on the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side or parts of Manhattan where you think you might be crossing 60th Street, you know, know this. Yes, you'll be paying a toll, but there's a lot of benefits to that. First of all, as a driver anywhere in the city, but including among your constituents in Manhattan, you're going to be getting much faster commutes into and around the Central Business District, so you'll make that you know, that opera or that Broadway show or the business meeting or the doctor's the appointment. Opera. Yeah, exactly. I mean, most, most people do. Uh, secondly, you're going to getting, be getting much better quality roads and bridges because there'll be actually, as Sam says, the first time ever dedicated fund for roads and bridges in New York City. And third, when you're traveling in other parts of the city, you're going to get dramatically reduced tolls. Likewise, on the transit side, and listen, even if you're a driver in Manhattan, you're probably also taking, or maybe, maybe even mostly taking, mass transit in terms of your daily life. You're going to be getting potentially restored bus service, including potentially on the 104. Mm -hmm. We can't, at this stage, right. designate which mm -hmm. lines could be restored, but we do 
call in our plan for using some of the money to restore further some of the 2010 uh, service cuts that were imposed. And so the, the, the 104 could be you know, eligible for that. And as we've talked about already, you know, just uh, 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 more frequent, more reliable, less crowded mm -hmm. subways, uh, likewise on buses, more, more SBS and BRT service. Uh, Mayor de Blasio has a terrific 20 new BRT and mm -hmm. SBS uh, route plan for the city. But if you talk to Polly Trottenberg and others, they don't have the funding for all of those lines. We could provide that. So as a driver, you're getting a lot. And as a transit rider, you're getting a lot. And that's why, again, we're getting so much traction. So Sam, how does the technology work? I know in London and Singapore, um, there are similar aspects of this technology. And my uh, constituents have been writing me, 60th Street is always the issue. It was during congestion pricing. I don't hear about anything else, just 60th Street. Yeah. And they want, in Manhattan, just so you know, many emails, they say, Gail, we would like to have Manhattanites on their easy pass be exempt from the 60th Street toll. I'm just saying what they mm -hmm, tell me. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they want to continue the discount on the parking garages. My constituents know what they have and what they want. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but just generally to talk about the uh, technology and how it would work. Because I don't think, you know, it was so funny when the bike lanes came in, everybody was concerned. And there are still people who are concerned, but they know what they are. The world hasn't collapsed. And I think the same would be with the technology, but it's very new for New Yorkers. How would it work? Well, uh, the, if New Yorkers want to see how, how it works, they just need to go over the Henry Hudson Bridge. So the Henry Hudson Bridge right now, uh, you don't stop at toll booths any longer. And the way it works is if you have an easy pass, it will register your car. And if you don't have an easy pass, uh, then it'll take a picture of your license plate and you'll pay a bit more for the pleasure of having your car photographed and getting something in the mail. Uh, we also see a third way, and that's the app world. And I don't know what the app world will be in five years, but already uh, there's electronic tolling that's using apps. Uh, and so we think that there'll be at least three different ways, and there are probably more. Uh, the I wristwatch will probably a way that you'll pay, and you'll, you'll pay for transport to everything we're no longer going to be using separate systems to pay for things. It'll probably be like the London Oyster, uh, Oyster card. You'll be paying for everything with your, your phone. Uh, but I know at 60th Street, people worry. They, oh. they worry that suddenly you're going to be besieged with a lot of people parking at 60th they Street. They are very concerned about that. Right. And, and that hasn't happened in Manhattan, in uh, London. It hasn't happened in Jersey City. It, you, know, you know, where we have everybody coming in from New Jersey is toll. Uh, it doesn't happen. And if you go to 60th Street now and you try to park on street, and I did this last Saturday, I have a brand new granddaughter. So while I don't usually drive in Manhattan, we have the infant seat for my granddaughter. So I drove to my two-year-olds, my, my sons, my grandson's two-year-old had a birthday, and it was on 61st Street. And I went there last Saturday, and I was there two hours for the birthday party, $70 to park. Mm -hmm. There was nothing on street. It, it's an illusion that suddenly we're going to be saturated with cars looking for parking. The nature of a driver is they don't go almost all the way in and then take the subway and you know just park in the remote area. Uh, when I was traffic commissioner, I built a garage at the foot of the Queensboro Bridge hoping that I would get drivers out. And it didn't work, and today that garage was, has been torn down and a big building is going up in its place. So Alex, I think that's a good example of uh, in, in, inability to find parking, so nobody's going to park there. But just in general, how do you approach this driver issue? Because it is an issue, and, and I think this plan helps a lot with the different tolling, with all these issues that we did not have answers to the last time we had the congestion mm -hmm. uh, vote. So how would you how do you drive how do you address the driver issue even more um, comprehensively? You mean in terms of the concerns of drivers Correct. with the new tolling Correct. system? Correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I'd say is, is that, as I mentioned before, drivers do get a lot out of this plan, and that's by design. That's why, and we failed to mention this so far. That's why the, the state's two leading organization that represents uh, the state's motorists and truckers, which is the AAA of New York as well as the New York State Motor Truck Association, both support this plan. So if you're worried about the drivers and the impact of this plan on the drivers, then look to those two organizations who represent those exact drivers. They support this plan. And the reason that AAA and these, and these other groups support the plan is they understand the importance of reducing traffic, 
uh, to, to both their members as well as to truckers. They understand the importance of that to business. They understand that federal dollars have dried up and just aren't coming. So if we need to invest in our roads and bridges, which is what they rely on, uh, we need new sources of funding. And the AAA, AAA, which has been very opposed to new tolling plans in the past, has opposed every previous uh, plan to toll the East River Bridges, has for the first time in decades supported a, a tolling plan like this. And that's because they, they understand that the running's on the wall, there aren't other sources of re revenue, and they, we have to ask everybody to contribute their fair share. And this plan, that's why we call it the Move New York Fair Plan, because it really is predicated on fairness. And the idea is to be fair between transit riders and drivers, between Manhattan and the other boroughs, between the city and, uh, and the suburbs. And we think we've achieved that. And we've done it with a lot of great input from people across the region. Unfortunately, we're out of time, which is very sad. But thank you, Sam Schwartz and Alex. Uh, Matheson, for joining me here today to discuss the Move New York proposal. You've given us a lot of good food for thought about how to solve what I think is fair to describe as a mass transit funding crisis facing our city. There's going to be a lot of discussion, I'm sure, and negotiation before this can be implemented, but you've explained everything well here today. I'm Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President. Please like or follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My handles are up on the screen. And if you'd like to stay informed on this and many other issues facing Manhattan, please sign up for our e-newsletters at the website on the screen. Thanks for watching Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and much thanks to our guests. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.